welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Fan Appreciation Month here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm checking out a horror movie from 1988. That movie is They Live. Now, I have wanted to watch this movie for many, many years, and for various reasons, I either I I, I either missed out on on my chance, or I just or or I just haven't had the time and thanks to this series now I can finally give this thing a, a watch I don't know what the hell it is the only thing I know is that it's is that it's made by uh, legendary filmmaker John John Carpenter and it stars Rowdy Roddy Piper uh, and has something to do with either aliens or zombies I'm not totally certain uh, I've been really interested, though, in, in watching this for a long time, and now I have my chance. I have no clue if this thing is going is going to be any good or not. It probably is going to be at least decent, because Carpenter at least can make movies that are decent. But there is also the slim chance that this thing could be a massive turd. I have no idea. And the only way I'm going to find out if there's any merit to this movie at all is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out They Live. You know, guys, uh... Going into this, I had no idea how good how good an actor Roddy Piper was going to be, and he's turned in a really interesting showing. He actually he actually can act better better than I would have ever ever dreamed, and the story here is really fascinating. So I am curious exactly where this story is going. You know, guys, uh, and I have now gotten pl plenty of chance to see to see these weird things that Piper is seeing with his special shades, and, uh, I can say this, they definitely look fucking creepy. Still not totally sure if they're aliens or whatever the fuck they are, but they definitely look kind of creepy and fucked up. You know, guys, now, if I honestly were to tell somebody that I saw a movie where two people were fist fighting over whether or not to put on a pair of a pair of shades, they would probably think I was completely nuts. However, in this movie, it kind of works because of the context of the scene. But still, I want you to process this. Two men having a fist fight over whether or not they should put on a pair of shades. That just, that just sounds fucked up when you don't have the context, you know what I mean? So wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. So these aliens are essentially just businessmen who've come to Earth who want to strip mine us of all of our, like, free will and all of our resources until we're basically just a, a dead husk and move on? That actually is sort of cool. I mean, okay, yeah, it kind of sucks that aliens are trying to strip mine us of all of our free will and thought, but God damn it, that actually is a creative fucking plan. Wait a minute. Was one of those soldiers holding on to the PKE meter from Ghostbusters? I swear to God he fucking was. That is probably, like, the coolest thing I've seen in this entire movie. But then again, that's because I'm a huge fan of Ghostbusters. So that's just, you know, instantly awesome to me. Well, guys, that was They Live. Let me shut that off. Okay. Wow. All right. Let's start with the writing. Writing here is incredibly solid. Um, we basically have a story about aliens, uh, and I mentioned this earlier, who have who have essentially come to Earth. They want to essentially uh, strip us of. They want to strip us of all of 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 all of our free will and all of our free thought. Uh, so that way, then they can then. Uh, scavenge our planet for all of its for, for, for all of its resources and then leave us for for dead and move on which is really kind of a cool thing I mean I honestly have seen a lot of films with very oddball alien uh, plots that one is one of the more creative ones most of them are normally just here to strip us of all of our fucking resources and run they normally don't try to numb us first which I think is sort of what makes it so fascinating and cool um, and we have Roddy Piper uh, playing essentially, uh, he, I, I, he is essentially a homeless guy who is just, who is just trying to get by, who kind of stumbles in, in, who kind of stumbles into this whole, you know, mess. 
and it's a fascinating story. It really is. And uh, and our characters have got tons and tons of depth, and the plot here is just fantastic. The story and the story here is paced out is paced out perfectly. At no time are you ever going to get bored with this with this film. Everything here, everything here is moving on at a perfect perfect pace, and our characters are all and our, per, and our characters are, are are all finally are all finally you know defined and fleshed out. Uh, and everything here just works, and it works really, really well. Um, and I noticed during during the opening credits, it mentioned that this movie is based on a short story. Now I kind of want to find that short, you know, story. I'm really curious now. Anyway, uh, writing here is incredibly strong. Our characters here are all just awesome from start from you know start to finish. Uh, and a lot of that, I think, has to do with the acting. So now I can segue right in, right into acting, because our two stars are Roddy Piper and Keith David. And I know that Keith David can act. I have known for many years that Keith fucking David can act and act very, very well. I wasn't totally sure about Roddy Piper until I went into this thing. And you know, out of and out of all of the wrestlers I've seen who have, who have tried to act. Piper turns in by far the best performance, uh, but then again, that really isn't saying much when you when you look at a bunch of the wrestlers who really thought it was a good idea to act, and and and, and compared to the showings by people like Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash, Triple H, and Edge, uh, Roddy Piper turns in almost fucking Oscar worthy stuff compared to that. Uh, Piper here is very, very comfortable on camera, and he really knows how to play his character well. Piper was perfect for the lead role, and I don't know, and I don't know if that's just because he just sort of worked his way in there, or perhaps maybe they wrote, or or maybe they wrote the character to better fit him. I'm not sure, but either way. Uh, Piper completely steals. He steals the show here. Now, mind you, now mind you, now, beyond you know Piper and David, everybody else is turning in an awesome and awesome performance too. Nobody here, like nobody here, is phoning it in. Everybody here is turning in something that is really going to help flesh out you know the world, and the and the movie certainly benefits from that. Special effects. I do have to comment on puppet on the on the puppeteering the puppet work because there because there is puppeteering in here. Uh, oftentimes, when you see the aliens uh, without their without their human with, without their human disguises and they look like these like blue the and they look kind of like these blue like zombie things. A lot of those are shown with puppets and the puppets them themselves look awesome until they have to talk. Now they also did do a couple of them. You you can kind of tell where it is basically a mask, and when they have and when they have actors wearing you know masks, it looks slightly better in terms in terms actually of the mouth movements. But but when it's but 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 when it's clearly a puppet, the mouth barely barely moves, and it looks and it looks kind of cheap, which is really, which is really, guys, the one and only negative I can give you in terms of special effects is the fact that the puppeteering here is just kind of weak. However, though, there also are so few shots that used puppets, I mean, that used puppets and that have, and, and they have that noticeable mouth, you know, problem that it honestly is not going to pull, it, it's not going to pull you out, out of the film too much. It honestly is just something that you might that you that you might notice and you might happen to comment on it and then you're just going to just go on because well you know the movie is still awesome. Uh, beyond that, guys, special effects here are awesome in terms of in in the, in, in, in this guy's is in terms of makeup effects, pyrotechnics, uh, what little bit of uh, blood is in here, like all of that is done very very well. Uh, special effects here are. You know, great. However, though, that also is, but, but that isn't saying much when you consider the fact that the movie is from is from John Carpenter, and Carpenter's always known how to do special effects really, really well. There also look to be a couple of shots here which used very early C, which used early CG, which looked fair, which, which looked fairly decent. So yeah, guys, special effects here were awesome, and the writing was good, and the acting, and and the acting was you know great. Music, once more, guys. 
Uh, Carpenter knows Carpenter knows how how to pick awesome music for his for his movies. This thing here has a fantastic score, mind you though. Mind you though now. Now the score here is not is is not as great and it's not as memorable as what as what was in say like Escape from fucking New York. However, it is still really good. In fact, it sounds kind of similar to what was heard in Escape from New York, which is awesome. Uh, so yeah, guys, score here is great. Um, God, is there anything else to talk about? Uh, lighting here is awesome, Can and and also and also the camera work is great. Ultimately, guys, when all is said and done, yes, I can totally recommend they live. This this thing is a fantastic, cheesy late '80s action sci-fi film, and I loved it. Um, I am I am very happy I am very happy to own it that this movie was great. Now, because this is Fan Appreciation Month, They Live came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in is a YouTuber by the name of Zombie Warrior eighty eight. You guys, please head over head over to his YouTube channel. That is youtube.com slash user slash zombie warrior eighty eight. And uh, dude, I'm I, and once more I'm just I'm just going to I'm just going to assume a dude. Thank you. I, I have I have been meaning to watch this thing for many, many years, and thanks and thanks to you, I finally had I finally had a reason to watch it and I had a copy of it to watch. And that is awesome. And I thank you for it. Once more, guys, that is youtube.com slash user slash zombie warrior eighty eight. Uh wow, this thing was great. Um you know what? I actually am kind of in the mood to watch a few more of Carpenter's films. And I happen to have Escape from New York, Escape from L.A., and The Thing all on Blu-ray. I'm going to go watch all three of those right now because, damn it, those, because, because, though, because those three movies are just as awesome as this thing is. And I, and I honestly just sort, and I just sort of want to keep it all, you know, rolling. So anyway, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.